So elk season has ended. Agriculture season has ended. And I did tag out. I shot a cow elk with the 338, 378 Weatherby Magnum. And yes, um, regardless of what you might have heard, the 338, 378 Weatherby Magnum does in fact have sufficient kaboom to take an elk. I have a couple of postseason thoughts that I would like to share um, about this rifle since I've carried it in the field. Um, I don't know, maybe about a dozen times, and successfully so, actually taking an animal with it. So if we recall, the biggest issue I've had with this rifle is that the scope kept moving in the scope rings. And we resolved that by putting it, I'm not sure how well it's showing on the camera, but by putting this um, Picatinny rail on here, it's a loophole rail, and mounting the Warney rings on the loophole rail. That solved the problem. This thing's shooting extremely consistently. The scope's no longer moving. Of course, there are some complications from that. And what I'm going to do, sort of moving around the um, tripod here, it's a little bit ginger. I'm going to remove the bolt so that we can discuss this um, really clearly. So here's the Here's the bolt. This is one of the cartridges that I've loaded. This is a 200 grain spear hot core sitting on 98 grains of Hodgden 4831. So this is the starting load according to Hodgden's load data for this bullet. So with the bolt out, we're going to go ahead and I'll, I'll show you the one thing I really don't like about this um, scope solution. If you load the the round in the right in the chamber, it works just fine. I'm not going to put it all the way in because it's kind of painful to extract them without the bolt. So it it loads just fine. And that's kind of where the good news ends. Now, by putting this here, let me turn it a little bit so you can see. There we go. There we go. Okay. So see this rail here? I don't I don't know what's casting a shadow behind it, but behind this there's some kind of shadow being cast. Anyways, you can see this rail here. Effectively placing this rail over the ejection port means that I've cut maybe half an inch of space out of my ability to to load and unload this rifle. So it loads just fine if you're chambering around right? Chambering around, it just goes right in just fine. See, again, without that extractor claw. Okay, so chambering around works just fine. What doesn't work so well is loading the magazine. This rifle has a two-round magazine, so when I would get to um, the forest where I was hunting, I would step out of my truck, and I would put around in the chamber, and we've seen that works just fine, and then I'd come and I'd try to put a round in the magazine. One. Here's another of these rounds. Two. Now on the bench, that works, and you can you see they're in there, right? They're in there. Now on the bench, this works just great. But when I was holding the rifle and loading it, you see the way my thumb is here? My thumb, right on the knuckle, kept nailing this loophole rail and i'll be honest with you after about the second day i had a great big welt on my knuckle right there where i kept hitting it every time i tried to load this thing i would end up smashing my knuckle into the rail it's not a deal breaker but i was walking around with <laughs> with a bleeding thumb more often than not so that's that's a downside to this solution um when I was actually using it, like if you um, if you squeeze off a shot and work the action with the bolt, it ejects just fine. I was worried that it would ha it would be problematic. Um, there wouldn't be enough room to eject. Here's a here's some empty brass. These things are huge, and so if you you see you see how much room it it takes of this ejection port, it doesn't take much to to um, 
hit that rail. But in practice, I found it didn't make a big difference. That, that didn't actually cause an issue in practice. Um, so, come on, go back in there. So that's kind of the, the one downside that I noticed um, to this scope solution is I ended up with a big welt on my thumb. It's probably, it's, it's healed. It's been a week since I've hunted with this now. But I end up with a big welt on my thumb. That's the only thing that I don't like about this scope solution. Everything else, this is the win. Except for the difficulty loading rounds into the magazine. This um, rail is the way to go. The scope doesn't move. The rifle's remarkably consistent. It worked remarkably, remarkably well. So these are the uh, scope mounts and rings that come from Weatherby, and this is initially what I had installed on this rifle. These are actually tally rings. And when I was having all the difficulty with my scope moving around, I began to wonder if the problem was actually this screw. This is the forward mount, and it's, and it's one of these screws in here. Actually, I said it was this screw. It might have been that one. Anyways... I damaged the threads on this ring when I initially tried to install it. I'm not even sure how I did it. I don't know if I cross-threaded something or what. But the threads were a little bit, um, I don't know if I'd say stripped out, but definitely damaged. And so what I did, I contacted Weatherby via their website. And after a couple days, they, came, they got back to me and said, listen, you need to talk to Tally. We don't make those rings. We just sell them. So I went to Tally's website. I filled out their customer service form. 15 minutes later, 15 minutes later, they emailed me and said, what's your address? We'll send you new screws. So I gave them my address. 15 minutes later, I got a shipment notification from the United States Postal Service. So talk about customer service. I mean, from the time they first heard about my problem, to so the time they put my uh, put replacement screws in the mail with 30 minutes, and that was probably only delayed because they needed to get my address. They sent me one of every screw that came in the package. Now, by the time these replacement screws arrived, I had already mounted this loopholed rail. So I haven't gone back and tested whether um, the tally rings with replacement screws would do the trick. Honestly, by the time that happened, I was so happy that I had something working. I just don't want to mess with it. But I want to call out that even though the tally ring is not the solution I finally went with, their customer service is stellar. I can't believe that customer service. 30 minutes, including having to ask me a question from the time I told them I have a problem they had parts in the mail for me. They haven't charged me for those parts. I got a $0 invoice. So sort of my last postseason thought about this rifle. I um, had been casually referring to this rifle as Vera. But one of my hunting buddies starting it, started calling it Hogzilla. And I'm afraid that she probably is going to keep that name. Um, when my... Hunting buddies helped me get the elk out and skinned and quartered. Um, the word Hogzilla got passed around a lot. And given that it was her first kill, um, I think that name's going to stick. So this rifle is now unofficially referred to as Hogzilla. And while I would probably prefer a slightly more poetic name than Hogzilla, there we go. That's what she's stuck with.